Okay, you ready? Well, it doesn't matter because I am plowing forward. You can pause the video if you're not ready, but we got to get going here. So 5.3. Use angle bisectors of triangles. And so our essential question, nice and simple, how do I use angle bisectors to find distance relationships? So we know what angle bisectors are, right? Here's our larger angle and this is an angle bisector. It is bisecting, cutting, it's a sectioning the angle into two uh, parts and so therefore the right uh, angle here and the left angle uh, these are congruent uh, to each other. But what is unique about this angle bisector is that the uh, each point on this angle bisector uh, is equidistant from the uh, sides or the same distance from uh, the sides of that angle. Uh, specifically it says that the yeah here it is uh, equidistant uh, from the two sides. Now when we say equidistant um, remember the distance the, is the closest distance from the point to the side and that's always going to be the perpendicular distance from the side. So each point on the angle bisector is equidistant from the uh, two sides of that uh, angle that it uh, bisected and it has to be the perpendicular uh, distance there. The converse of this again switching is going backwards and saying that if there is a point that is equidistant from the sides of an angle, then that point is on the angle bisector. And that's it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and use that skill here, that principle. Let's look over at example one. Let me slide things over here and we're good. Yep, we can do this. Okay, so we are told that, uh, what are we told? We're told that to find the measure of angle GFJ, GFJ, I want to find the measure of this angle right here. Okay. And, you know, we're doing a section on uh, angle bisectors, and this looks like it is an angle bisector, but I have to be able to prove that it is an angle bisector. So can I do that? They don't tell me. I was looking for a given that it's uh, telling me that it is an angle bisector, but they don't tell me. So can I determine that it is? Well, what is true about an angle bisector? Yes, it does bisect uh, the larger angle. So if it did, then this angle would be 42. But they're not telling me that this angle is 42. In fact, that's what I have to find out on whether or not it is. So I have no idea, at least uh, I cannot prove that these two angles are congruent. Hmm. But I do know that every point on the angle bisector is equidistant from the sides of that angle. And remember that distance has to be the perpendicular distance. So this is a perpendicular distance from the side to the uh, this ray in the middle here. And it's 7, and this one's also 7, so bada bing, uh, this point is equidistant from the sides of the uh, angle, and therefore this ray that goes through that point is a perpendicular bisector, and therefore it is bisecting the larger angle, so if the lower angle is 42, then the upper angle is also going to be 42. And I just did that for you. Example number three. No, wait a second. Let's do example number two. So here's this guy coming in and wants to score, of course, in the goal. So what does the um, goalie do? Uh, the goalie, in order to make sure that he has the same distance to either side, uh, to defend, you know, block the ball, uh, needs to make sure that he is doing a perpendicular 
uh, distance from what am I doing? Yeah, no, 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 no. Let's not do that. Um, perpendicular distance here. Okay, and that would be the short, shortest distance from where he's standing to where the ball would be uh, intercepting. And uh, he needs to get himself there on that angle bisector uh, between those two angles. And then when he moves, don't move parallel to the goal, uh, but move perpendicular to this line, and that'll be the shortest uh, distance. And if he does that, he'll be able to get there as quick as possible. So goalies do geometry, <laughs> is the point there. Example number three, they are asking for what value of x does this point P lie on the bisector of angle A. So here's your larger angle A and in order to get P to be equidistant, well first of all in order to get it on the angle bisector it needs to be equidistant from the sides and these are perpendicular distances, that's cool. So in other words these two segments have to be congruent if they were congruent then they would have the same length so therefore I can set these two segment lengths equal to each other which is what they've done here and then I can solve this equation for x what would I do? Subtract x from both sides and then add 1 to both sides and I would get uh, 4 equals x. Hey actually I want x equals 4 so what uh, property of equality is it that allows me to go from 4 equals x to x equals 4 and you are right that's uh, the symmetric property of equality, just to remind ourselves of that. So uh, x equals 4, they've been able to solve for that, and now they're asking me for, and that's it, I just need to know, yeah they were not asking me for the distance here, so just the value of x, so I am done. So you are ready now to do uh, your three different problems here on your sheet of paper. So go ahead and pause the video and work those things out. Now you will remember that uh, we had just finished the uh, perpendicular bisector in the last section and that we talked about how this perpendicular bisector um, that it intersected that they uh, the perpendicular bisectors for each of the three sides intersect at one point. In other words, they are concurrent and that point at which they are concurrent we call that the circumcenter because that is the center of a circle that circumscribes the circle, uh, the, uh, the, the triangle. So that is formed by the perpendicular bisectors because remember uh, the points on a perpendicular bisector are equidistant from the ends of that segment. Uh, in a same way, but different, uh, let's talk about now the angle bisector. So here's our triangle, and let me get this, let's just here. Let's do this over here, let's go over here, that should be good enough, huh? So remember at each point on this angle bisector is equidistant from the sides of the angle, and it turns out that the, when you have a triangle, here's a larger triangle on the outside here, and you draw an angle bisector out of each of these vertices that those lines also are con uh, con concurrent, yeah there is concurrent, and we call that point the in center, not the circumcenter, uh, as, it was, as it was for the uh, perpendicular bisector, but in center, and, and the reason for that is because this is the center of a circle that is inscribed inside of the uh, triangle. And the reason for that is because each point on this angle bisector is equidistant from the sides. So same over here, it's equidistant. So in fact I could probably should go ahead and put uh, congruence tick marks on these. And you can see that these are your uh, radii that are going around. And so your circle is inscribed inside of this uh, triangle. Okay, so let me see if I can
can do any examples here for this and I can't so let me just kind of set you up I don't have any other examples similar to this let me set you up for this so uh, point D is the in center so here's the in center of this uh, wider triangle and they want us to find uh, DB the distance from the in center uh, to the side now wait a second here um, is this a so we have to think what's going on here um, and we have to decide whether this is a uh, angle bisector now this is going to be a perpendicular bisector wait a second in center huh okay so if they're saying in center they're telling me that this is the point of concurrence of angle bisectors so there's your angle bisector angle bisector and then we can draw a circle around here and remember that as you go down this angle bisector the uh, point is equidistant from the sides so at first what I was starting to do was think hey is this a perpendicular bisector kinda looks like it is but I do not have enough information yes it is perpendicular but I do not know that this segment down the bottom is congruent to the segment on the top. Uh, so, but I do know that this is the in center, and anytime they tell me it's in center, I know that it's going to be um, that this point. No, sorry, the, the the lines going through it uh, are going to be uh, angle bisectors that are the point of concurrence of these angle bisectors. Okay, and obviously, look through here. Is this a perpendicular bisector of this side? No way, because this uh, segment on the left is much larger than the segment on the on the right. Okay, so I will let you determine what uh, DB is. I've kind of set you up uh, for that, and then also here with uh, uh, number twenty, uh, this is the in center. So therefore, it's created by the point of concurrence. Uh, of angle bisectors and work from there. Okay, nice and quick. Hope that's helpful to you. May the Lord bless you and I do look forward to seeing you in class.